Hey guys, John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here. Smartphones are all the rage this holiday season, and Sprint has two of the arguably hottest ones available right now, the Palm Pixie and the HTC Hero. So I thought I'd do a little head-to-head -head action and go through a few categories that I think are the most important, and you can see which one is going to be best for you. So there are a ton of categories that we can cover, obviously, but I picked the ones that I felt were most important. So we're gonna cover price, we're going to cover internet, um, some operating system overviews, the camera, the YouTube, and the keyboard, and a few other sort of random specs along the way. So let's start with the devices themselves. The Pixie comes in at 3.51 ounces, and the Hero comes in at 4.5. So there's a difference there, uh, weight-wise, but not much. Both are extremely small and pocketable devices. Screen resolution on the Pixie, you're going to get 320 by 400, and on the Hero, you're going to get 320 by 480. So you're going to get 80 extra pixels on the Hero. Uh, Camera-wise, the Pixie is going to give you a 2 megapixel resolution, whereas the Hero is going to give you 5. So you definitely are getting better picture quality. And I saw that in all my tests as well. Uh, from a price standpoint, though, the Pixie is definitely a little bit less money. Uh, it's coming in at 99 bucks on a two-year contract, and the Hero is going to run you $80 more um, at just about $179.99. Just something to uh, keep in mind. They all have Bluetooth. Um, where the big difference specs-wise come in is in Wi-Fi and expandable media. The Pixie does not have Wi-Fi and does not have an expandable memory card slot. You're limited to just the internal storage, which I believe is 4 gigs. Uh, the Hero, on the other hand, does have Wi-Fi and also has a micro SD card slot, so you can go all the way up to 32 gigs. Both are, of course, EVDO, Reve phones, um, which means full 3G. Let's get into the actual phone itself and stop talking about specs and show you some things that you can see. So what I use most on a phone is the internet. I do a lot of browsing. I do a lot of my work from my mobile device. So having a good internet browser is very important to me. Both phones have capacitive touchscreens and support multi-touch. So I want to show you how this looks. The uh, Pixie is running Palm's web OS, whereas the Hero is running a custom skinned version of Android 1.5, which is called SenseUI. I did a full overview of SenseUI in a previous video. So let's unlock both devices. You can see the unlock screens here. Here it is on the Pixie. To unlock, you just slide it up. You can see the notifications down there for an email, and you can just slide that off to the side. Let's unlock the Hero, and you just slide the screen down to unlock. And right here, you can definitely see the size of the screen. There clearly is a difference. The Pixie has a full physical QWERTY keyboard, which I'll talk about in a minute, and the Hero relies on an on-screen keyboard. So I've turned Wi-Fi off on the Hero to make this a fair comparison. I'll do another test to show you with Wi-Fi on in case you're really curious to what the difference is going to be. So we will load up technobuffalo.com on each of these. Open up the browser and I'll type it in. The accelerometer kicked in right there. Okay, and this website has been loaded on both of these, so it'll simulate a test of a site that you visit on a regular basis. And we'll do the same thing here on the Hero. Okay, so I've got them queued up here and ready to go, and we're going to load them on each. And again, this is just a test of the same EVDO Reve network in exactly the same location with exactly the same amount of bars of service, which is five bars. So let's see how both of these phones fare. Go ahead and launch both at the same time. All right, and they are both off, and I'll show you after these load how the multi-touch gestures work and how the browser looks overall and how it renders. Looks like the Pixie jumped out to a bit of an early lead. The Hero caught up. You can see the progress bar right there is a blue circle and the green progress bar right there um, along the bottom. So both are almost done. And processor for processor wise, these two are very close. So it looks like the Hero just finished and the Pixie is still going. It's like everything's sort of popping up there. The Pixie's still going. So while the Pixie is still loading, you can still read and navigate the page. Just finished. I'll show you what the browser looks like on the Hero first. So scrolling is very smooth, and both of these are based on WebKit. You may have heard that. Essentially, it's just a foundation, an open source foundation for building a mobile browser, and it lets you view pages in full HTML glory. So you can navigate very smoothly with finger scrolling. 
if you want to zoom in, so if I want to read this text, for example, I can just double tap. And I'll zoom in. It won't sort of scale the text so well, but it will sort of bring it into the window. And as like I mentioned before, these both support multi-touch. So I can take two fingers and I can zoom in and out. See, it doesn't, it's not so smooth on the Hero. It works, and you can use it in pictures as well, but it's not as smooth as you'd see on the iPhone, for example. Can zoom out. It's definitely functioning, and it's usable, but it's not the most smooth thing. One of the things that I always check when I view mobile browsers is how the processor handles quick page loads. So if you're trying to flick through a page very quickly, sometimes you can get a checkerboard pattern at the bottom. So let's see if the Hero does that. Open the Hero brought the page back up to the top and bottom as quickly as I could scroll. And you can see that Techno Buffalo here does look like just as it would look on your desktop browser. Oh, this is a very, very capable um, browser. You can see that Flash is not supported right there. You can clearly see the big F with the exclamation point through it. So if you're looking for a good browser, the Hero is probably one of the best. Um, of course, it has Accelerometer, and you can navigate the page in landscape as well. It looks great, it's very easy to navigate, and the multi-touch is definitely a nice add-on, and I wouldn't necessarily rely on it. You can see right there, it's not even, not even working. So let's take a look at the Pixie. You can see how the browser looks on this. Definitely a smaller screen, um, but certainly a very usable browsing experience. So it's a little bit on the small side. Let's take a look at multi-touch, since that was what we took a look at first on the Hero. buttery smooth. You can definitely see the difference in how much quickly multi-touch works for this. That may have something to do with uh, Palm's operating system and particularly Palm's browser natively being built to support multi-touch. Android right out of the box does not support it. something HTC added. So that may be a reason why it just works so well. It works just as well as it does on the iPhone or really any other uh, multi-touch support device. It's really, really smooth. If I want to zoom in, like I said, I can of course multi-touch or I can double tap on some text. And that does bring it right up into view. And this does have an accelerometer as well, so you can view this in portrait, and the rotation speed is very quick. Let's check out the scrolling and see if it's quick enough to keep up with what we want without getting that checkerboard pattern. And there is that checkerboard pattern, but it goes away pretty quickly. Certainly one of the knocks on the Pixie has been it's a bit of an anemic processor. That's certainly been something that's hindering the Hero as well. Um, and you can sort of see that in effect here, in little things like the browser. Um, it's a very capable browser. I think that uh, Palm's browser is absolutely rivals the best browser on the market, which in my opinion is definitely the uh, iPhone's mobile Safari. Palm's browser is just as good, just as full featured, and more importantly, Flash support will be coming uh, supposedly in early 2010. So from a browser standpoint, it's gonna really come down to size uh, of the screen and personal preference, whether the multi-touch is important to you or not, or whether you want a bigger screen. Both are extremely capable and really useful browsing, and I was able to do everything that I would normally do on a typical browser on both devices. Hope you guys uh, found that helpful. Now, before I mention this in the previous videos, it may sound a little bit weird, before I go to bed at night, I like to watch some YouTube videos. Generally, I'll watch you know, what's most popular for the day, and sort of just see what was going on. And both of these have native YouTube uh, support and also give you a chance to see how them, both of them handle video. So let me go ahead and open up the YouTube browsers on each. But before I do that, I want to give you a demonstration also of the Wi-Fi difference on the browser between both operating systems. Since the Hero has Wi-Fi and the Pixie doesn't, and if you're looking to compare both devices sort of apples to apples, it's definitely something to know that there is Wi-Fi supported. So I'm going to do just a very quick load speed test with Wi-Fi turned on on the Hero. All right, so Wi-Fi has been kicked on on the Hero. We got Techno Buffalo queued up to reload. And let's see how quickly both of these handle them. So the Hero was noticeably faster even without Wi-Fi, so I assume this is going to be a blowout with Wi-Fi. Um, but we'll see. You never know how, how things are going to load. The green bar of the Hero is almost already done. And the Pixie looks to be about three quarters of the way done. And I'm running on a relatively quick Wi-Fi network, and the Hero supports, if you're wondering, uh, A, B, and G Wi-Fi. It's all done on the Hero and still loading on the Pixie, so not surprising to anyone. Uh, it's a much faster experience over Wi-Fi. So like I mentioned, let's take a look at YouTube very quickly. I don't want this to get to be a 30-minute video, but you can see the Pixie's still loading the site 
and uh, the hero was done quite a bit ago. One of the cool things about the pre, I should mention on WebOS, is the deck of cards features. How you can handle multi applications and uh, the way that you handle uh, multitasking. To get rid of an application, I just throw it off the screen. And it's gone. Let's take a look at YouTube here. Just so you can see very quickly what the load times are going to be over a pretty strong uh, 3G signal. So we'll pick the, uh, the first video here. Just so you can see what the player natively looks like. And it does play in landscape, as do all videos on the pre. And since again, since this 3G, there's a little bit of buffer time. The quality is not as crisp and clear um, as you would expect, but the speaker is pretty loud on the pre, which is a nice addition. Uh, it's a very simplistic design. Some sort of uh, pause it. Um, it doesn't load that uh, slowly. It's much faster than I would have expected it to be. Uh, quality is pretty clear even over 3G. Let's take a look at the YouTube experience on the Hero. And again, I know I'm running through these a little bit quickly. There's just so much to show and so much to compare. I just want to give you a general overview um, as to how things look. So I'll open that up. You can get a glimpse of the operating systems on each of these as well. And I've done overviews on um, all operating systems. You can see the bevy of uh, sort of add-ins that Sprint does. Sprint TV, Sprint Navigation, that all sort of come free with your everything plan. We'll open up YouTube. You get a few more options here on Android than what you get with uh, the pre. You can view by most popular, most viewed, top rated. Uh, let's take a look at any video and see how it looks. We'll take the first one there. You can see what the video quality is. Hey YouTube, right now I am in the Los Angeles Regional Food Bank. The reason why I'm here is because a lot of you leave comments saying that the number one thing you wish you could do is you could... So you can see right there, you get a few more button options. You get sort of that cool green looking bar across the bottom for speed. Um, it definitely is, is a little more featured YouTube experience. And you'd expect that, especially because... Well, Google made the operating system, and Google owns YouTube, so you would think they'd have a pretty good built-in YouTube viewing experience, and they certainly don't disappoint. Let's go ahead and move on to the last test we're going to do, and that's the keyboard. Certainly, inputting text is very important, and both of these do it in very different ways. Um, the Pixie, as you can tell, has a full physical QWERTY keyboard, and from the look of it, it looks very small, and you figure it's going to be quite cramped, but actually has a pretty good experience for typing. Um, I did a video demonstrating the keyboard uh, quality, but I'll show you what this looks like as well. You can throw that off the screen. Go ahead and open this up, and we'll go to the Notes application. Just need to find the Memos. There we go. And we'll go ahead and open up a new memo, and I'll show you just a quick test on how the keyboard works on this. So this is a test. Um, very accurate and surprisingly accurate. And this keyboard is shockingly easy to type on, especially considering how small it is. It's got those sort of ridges and buttons and a little bit of a tacky feel. Make the keyboard nice and easy to use. What this doesn't have, and a big knock, I think, on WebOS as a whole is autocorrect. If I type a word or a letter wrong, it's not going to correct me. With a small keyboard, it's certainly prone to do that. Um, so that is definitely something to keep in mind. But the keyboard on the Pixie is one of the better small candy bar uh, QWERTY keyboards that I've ever used. So if that's important to you and you're worried about the keyboard on the Pixie, it's certainly something you don't need to concern yourself with. Let's take a look at the keyboard here on the Hero. Okay, so we've got a text application open here and you see you've got a on-screen keyboard with some haptic feedback, meaning when you touch it you get a little bit of vibration feeling. And this does have autocorrect, so I'll type the same thing and this is a test. See that I spelt it wrong, actually, but it does tell me that that is a test. If I go ahead and hit space, it automatically auto-corrects it. Now you also have a landscape keyboard as well, if you want a little bit of a, a bigger typing experience. I'll try this again. So it typed it wrong, but it corrected it for me. So typing is going to come down to which one you prefer, whether you like a physical keyboard or an on-screen keyboard. I tend to prefer a physical keyboard, but the on-screen experience on the Hero is really good, and the autocorrect um, is probably second to none. You tend to make a lot of mistakes with an on-screen keyboard, so you need a good autocorrect system. And I think the Hero does a fantastic job with it. So at the end of the day, which one do you choose? 
It's going to be personal preference. Whether you don't mind the smaller screen of the Pixie and you like the maybe more full-featured browsing experience that you get with it, and you can enjoy a full keyboard, or whether you want the more open environment of the Hero and the Android Marketplace, as opposed to the smaller, more limited Palms app catalog, you're getting both very full-featured media phones. Um, although with the Hero, you are getting Wi-Fi and access to more storage via its micro SD card. Both are really good options, and I offer something a little bit different to the marketplace, and I take my hat off to Sprint for offering very different, but uh, really full-featured phones. A lot of very good choices now on Sprint's network. And anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed. For exclusive content, check me out at Twitter, twitter.com slash john4lakers. And uh, for all your tech news and create your own tech website and even monetize it and make a few bucks, and to talk to other tech heads, check out technobuffalo.com. See you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.